Hello and welcome back to the Umbrella Academy. I am Mir Niaz. In this lecture, we will discuss mechanism of epoxidation of alkenes, mechanism of acid catalyzed epoxide opening, stereochemistry of epoxidation, stereospecificity, for example, transdihydroxylation of cis and trans 2 butene give different products. Dihydroxylation reactions are characterized by the addition of OH and OH across an alkene. Consider the simplest alkene molecule, ethylene. Upon dihydroxylation, it gives ethylene glycol. There are a number of reagents, well suited to carry out this transformation. Some reagents provide for an anti-dihydroxylation, while others provide for a syndihydroxylation. In this lecture, we will explore a two-step procedure for achieving anti-dihydroxylation. The first step of the process involves conversion of the alkene into an epoxide. And the second step involves opening the epoxide to form a transdiol. An epoxide is a three-membered cyclic ether. In the first part of the process, a peroxy acid, RCO3H, reacts with the alkene to form an epoxide. Peroxy acids resemble carboxylic acids in structure, possessing just one additional oxygen atom. Peroxy acids are strong oxidizing agents and are capable of delivering an oxygen atom to an alkene in a single step. The product is an epoxide, also called oxirane. Some simple peroxy acids, sometimes called peracids, and their corresponding carboxylic acids are shown here. Notice that a peroxy acid has same structure as carboxylic acid, except that an extra oxygen atom is inserted between OH of an acid, so that peracid has OOH acidic linkage. A peroxy acid epoxidizes an alkene by a concerted electrophilic reaction where several bonds are broken and several are formed at the same time. The carbon-oxygen pi bond breaks towards electronegative oxygen to attach with hydroxyl proton. The oxygen-oxygen bond breaks to form a new carbon-oxygen pi bond. The carbon-carbon pi bond breaks to form a new sigma bond with oxygen, which at the same time uses hydroxyl electron pair to form a sigma bond with another end of alkene. The red dotted lines in the transition state depict the bonds that are being formed, whereas the black dotted lines depict the bonds that are being broken. Thus, starting with the alkene and the peroxy acid, a one-step reaction gives the epoxide and the acid directly, without any intermediates. Because the epoxidation takes place in one step, there is no opportunity for the alkene molecule to rotate and change its cis or trans geometry. Thus, epoxide retains whatever stereochemistry is present in the alkene. Once the epoxide has been formed, it can then be opened with water under either acid-catalyzed or base-catalyzed conditions. For now, we will explore only the acid-catalyzed opening of epoxides. Under these conditions, the epoxide is first protonated to produce an intermediate that is very similar to a bromonium or mercurinium ion. All three cases involve a three-membered ring bearing a positive charge. We have seen that bromonium and mercurinium ions can be attacked by water from the backside. In much the same way, a protonated epoxide can also be attacked by water from the backside. The necessity for backside SN2 attack explains the observed stereochemical preference for anti-addition. In the final step of the mechanism, the axonium ion is deprotonated to yield a transdiol. Once again, notice that water, rather than hydroxide, is used to deprotonate in order to stay consistent with the conditions. 
In acidic conditions, hydroxide ions are not present in sufficient quantity to participate in the reaction, and therefore, they cannot be used when drawing the mechanism. Let us try to write the products of these epoxidation reactions. The reagent MCPBA denotes metachloroperbenzoic acid, which brings epoxidation across alkene double bond. This is followed by acid-catalyzed ring opening. In the end, these reagents achieve dihydroxylation, which means that OH and OH will add across the alkene. Since the two groups are identical, OH and OH, we don't need to consider the regiochemistry of this process. However, the stereochemistry must be considered. For that, Begin by determining the number of chirality centers formed. In this case, two new chirality centers are formed, so out of four possible enantiomers, we expect only the pair of enantiomers that result from an anti-addition. That is, the OH groups will be added to opposite sides of the pi bond. In this one, if OH is shown above the plane, then this methyl will be down the plane. OH here will then be shown down the plane so that H will be above the plane. The second anti-enantiomer will be having stereochemistry opposite to this one. That is, OH here, down the plane so that methyl is above the plane. OH here, above the plane so that H will be down the plane. The result is the formation of anti-enantiomers. In this second example, the reagents indicate epoxidation followed by acid-catalyzed opening. Thus, anti-dihydroxylation will be achieved across carbon-carbon double bond. In doing so, only one new chirality center is formed. It is true that, the reaction proceeds through an anti-addition of OH and OH. However, with only one chirality center in the product, the preference for anti-addition becomes irrelevant. Both possible enantiomers are formed. But stereochemistry is shown only at the chiral center. Thus OH on this chiral carbon can be shown above the plane or below the plane. The stereochemistry of other OH doesn't matter. The result is the formation of enantiomers. Treating an alkene with MCPBA, followed by aqueous acid, results in the anti-addition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, two new chirality centers are generated, so we expect only the pair of enantiomers that would result from anti-addition. The stereochemistry of hydroxyl groups in one enantiomer will be opposite to that in other. Thus, OH here above the plane and here down the plane. The other enantiomer will be having opposite stereochemistry, with OH here down the plane and OH here above the plane. The result is the formation of anti-enantiomers. Treating cis-2-butene with MCPBA, followed by aqueous acid, results in the transaddition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, two new chirality centers are generated. So out of four possible enantiomers, we expect only the pair of enantiomers that would result from anti-addition, just like we did in halogenation of cis-2-butene. However, treating trans-2-butene with MCPBA, followed by aqueous acid, results in the transaddition of OH and OH across the alkene. In this case, two new chirality centers are generated. Therefore, we would expect two anti-enantiomers out of four possible stereoisomers of this product to be formed like this. Just like we did in case of halogenation of trans-2-butene, if a 180 degrees rotation across C2-C3 is carried out in both cases, so that the terminal methyl are eclipsing on same side. We end up with the structures, where OH groups are positioned on same side. 
these structures have a mirror plane of symmetry. Thus, both these structures are actually same and represent single meso compound. Thus, like halogenation, antidihydroxylation of trans 2 butene with paracid gives a single meso compound. Whereas cis 2 butene gives a pair of enantiomers. Thus, epoxidation followed by ring opening with water is also stereospecific reaction, as different starting material give different products. Treating an alkene with MCPBA results in an epoxide. Further treatment of the epoxide with ethanol under acidic conditions results in a ring opening reaction in which ethanol serves as the nucleophile. Nucleophilic attack occurs at the more substituted tertiary position, so the net result is the addition of OH and OET across the alkene, with the later being placed at the more substituted position. Both anti-enantiomers will be formed. The stereochemistry of groups added, and already present on double-bonded carbons, can be written easily. Ethanol above the plane, so methyl already present, goes down the plane. OH down the plane, so that hydrogen already present, goes above the plane. The other enantiomer will be having stereochemistry opposite to the previous one. That is, ethanol down the plane, so that, methyl above the plane. Hydroxyl group above the plane, so that, hydrogen down the plane. Treatment of the epoxide with ethanol C2H5OH under acidic conditions results in a ring opening reaction in which the oxygen atom of ethanol serves as the nucleophilic center. Nucleophilic attack occurs at the more substituted tertiary position, so the net result is the addition of OH and ethoxy group across the alkene, with the later being placed at the more substituted position. Since the starting epoxide is enantiomerically pure, because we are starting only with the enantiomer with epoxide above the plane, we expect an enantiomerically pure product and not a mixture of enantiomers. The stereochemistry can be written as ethanol approaches from down face so that methyl is pushed up towards top face. Ring is open towards top face so that hydroxyl lies on top face in product. If we had started with one methylcyclohexene, then the enantiomeric pair would result. Because in that case, epoxide would be formed on both faces, top as well as bottom face, which upon ring opening, would give two products that are anti-enantiomers.